What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So we've been trying to work towards getting ourselves this dimension inscriber. I think we're going to try and get that done today. Uh, last episode, we finally made the resonance cell frame full. And then off camera here, I made a couple of these advanced inscribers and some of these machine bases. Like, we've made these things in the past, but I made crafting recipes for uh, both of these things just to make them super easy. Uh, we need to get the empty dimension tab and the draconic core. These are things that we still have yet to do. So let's see about doing that. I think I want to try and make a auto craft recipe for the draconic core. So let's start there. Let's um, take a look at, oh, I got to go in here, take a look at this, this, click the right thing and this. All right. So we have that set up now. I don't think we know how to make a genetics processor or a dislocator, but I think we know how to make elite pleating. We have litharite. Uh, we do not have plutonium. I believe the system knows how to make draconic blocks. Let's take a look. Maybe we don't know how to make draconic blocks. All right, so let's start here. So we will bookmark this. We want to learn how to make draconic blocks. We want to learn how to make genetic processor. Did we do this? I feel like we might have. We have one in the system and we know how to craft it. Okay, so we're good there. The dislocator, we will make a recipe for that unless I already have one. I know we made some already and used them, but I don't know. Yeah, so we don't have a recipe for that. What about Eye of Ender? We have a recipe for that, so we should be good here. Okay, and then finally, uh, Elite Plating, I'm pretty sure... We know how to craft, yeah. If I tell it to craft that, it can do all the things. No problem there. So finally, plutonium is the thing that we are missing. So in order for us to get plutonium, we're gonna have to do some stuff. And what that stuff is, I'm not actually sure at the moment, but let's put this in here. Yeah, these are the recipes that I made uh, already to get that going here. I had to make one for a Fluix block, the inscriber, the advanced inscriber, and then the machine base. Um, but yeah, so if we wanted to make ourselves plutonium, I'm not sure how this works. So let's take a look. Uh, plutonium dust would be a way that we can do that. Molten plutonium turns into plutonium, apparently. Interesting. I don't know if that's the only way. It says the blocks are craftable. Ah, okay. So the block of plutonium comes from tiny piles of plutonium plus mana infused metal plus cyanide which we have loads of and then empowered palace crystal and then cobalt okay so i think tiny pile of plutonium is where we should start this is probably going to be an involved process here more so than i was thinking um so we can do a fuel reprocessor to get plutonium we need depleted mox nuclear fuel or depleted uranium nuclear fuel okay so depleted uranium we can get from a nuclear craft fission reactor by having enriched uranium nuclear fuel put through it and then it depletes it okay so the enriched uranium nuclear fuel comes from 238 and 235 we've seen this before in other packs that use ic2 uh looks like we can use uh by the way if we touch any of this stuff we have to have the ic2 uh radiation suit i think otherwise we get radiation poisoning uh i'm not sure if we have yes so if we use this stuff here the uranium ingots those are fine to hold as far as i remember the at least the immersive engineering ones and then the 235 nuclear craft uranium is fine to hold as well but this enriched uranium nuclear fuel i think is still going to give us problems so yeah we're gonna have to make ourselves the uh industrial craft radiation suit uh i'm forget what it's called actually it is called well let me see if i can find the icons here for it it's not this stuff it is the scuba gear i think yeah hazmat suit scuba helmet the hazmat suit leggings and then there's a pair of boots that go with it i think it's just the rubber boots yeah i think I think it's these right here. So we need to make this, 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 and this for us to touch any of these things. When we get it automated, if we get it automated, and it's all done through applied energistics, we won't matter. But yeah, we're definitely going to want this stuff. So in order to make a scuba helmet, 
Looks like we need just orange dye, plastic, black glass, iron bars, easy. Hazmat suit, we are going to need orange and then plastic, easy. Hazmat leggings, plastic or rubber, orange, and then the rubber boots, obviously rubber or plastic, and then black dye. Okay, let me make that real quick. All right, we're all suited up. We're ready to go. Awesome. So that wasn't that bad. Uh, I just ended up using plastic for all the rubber pieces just because I want to use the IC2 rubber for things that require actual IC2 rubber. So yeah, I made uh, more of that. We set up plastic a long time ago. I don't know if you guys remember this over here and it looks like this has ran out, but we put rubber wood here. We're extracting with the tree fluid extractor, which was going into the latex processing unit. And then that was putting it over here into this drawer, which we put an upgrade in a long time ago. We have 22.8 thousand tiny dry rubbers. You have to put nine of those into the crafting grid in a three by three to make the large dry rubber. And then you smelt that for the plastic. So we never did automate that fully, but we have a bunch of that ready to go. So anyway, uh, again, I went through and I looked at all the things that we needed. So the draconic core requires this plutonium, which requires the block, which requires a plutonium, which requires depleted uranium nuclear fuel and enriched nuclear fuel. So pretty much we have to start here. So the recipe I want to do is this, which uh, is safer for us to handle. <laughs> We're getting uranium ingots. That's fine. But the uranium-235, that's another thing. I believe we did set up a recipe for that before. Uh, yeah, we have some 235. And if I click on here, we can see that one ingot goes through this process and turns into the 238 and the 235. I think we had a machine set up over here to do that. Was it way over here? Must be way over here. Yeah, the isotope separator. Okay, so yeah, we set that up a long time ago. We need it for something. We haven't really touched it since, but now that we do need it, it's fine. Um, so let's do this recipe here. So we're using the 235 from Nuclear Craft and then the uranium ingots, which we have from Immersive Engineering to make the enriched uranium nuclear fuel. All right, we'll just find a home for that down here somewhere. All right, we'll put it like right into here. That's fine. Okay, so that's taken care of. So now we need to deplete that. And this shows that it goes into the fission reactor. I seem to recall though, that nuclear craft had some kind of a way to deplete isotopes without actually using the stuff. Um, I don't remember what that's called. If I just search for deplete fuel reprocessor, uh, no, that's not what we wanted. Yeah, I can't remember what that was called. Hmm. I remember that, like, Nuclear Craft has so many different machines in it that I have used in the past. Fission controller old. I mean, we could just set up the fission controller, and I don't really have a problem with doing that. But if there's, like, a one-block solution that just, like, uh, takes the items and then... I guess, uh, reacts them or does whatever. I should just go through these machines real quick. All right. So the item that I was thinking of was this decay hastener, but it does not look like it does what I want to do. So as far as I can tell, yeah, you can take plutonium and decay it down to uranium or whatever. There's like a bunch of different ways you can make these nuclear craft stuff using this decay hastener, but none of it is what we want. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is used for doing other things in nuclear craft. And that's the thing that I was thinking of. So, but anyway, we need to make the depleted uranium nuclear fuel and that requires a fission reactor. So to make the fission reactor, we need to do some stuff here. We need nuclear furnace. Do we have a nuclear furnace recipe? We don't. Okay. So let's go ahead and start here. And I don't remember if this is the multi-block. I'm pretty sure this is the multi-block since this is a controller. Building multi-block reactor using reactor casing, reactor cells, coolers, and moderator blocks. Place the controller along an edge at a corner or within one of the faces of the structure. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to have to get into the multi-block setup here. So, tough alloy, basic plating, and a furnace. Do we have all of that stuff? I think so. Maybe not the furnace, but... That's fine. We can make another recipe. I'm pretty sure all this other stuff we should have potentially magnesium diboride. Yeah, we have all of that. Perfect. All right. So let's just make a recipe for that. So 
with all of this stuff combined, we should be able to make ourselves the fission controller. Does it know how to make everything? Oh man, that's so good when we just have all these crafting recipes that are ready to go or we can just use them to build like more things without having to get too involved with it. However, the tough alloy still takes a little bit of time to craft, but that's fine. So we have ourselves a fission controller. Does that complete a quest? I feel like that should complete a quest. Let's go to the nuclear craft section here. I know there was one. Um, so we completed that decay. Oh, there is a decay hastener, fuel reprocessor, fluid extractor, fission fuels, uh, salt mixer, super cooler. But none of these are for the fission machine, huh? Fusion core. Okay. Well, I mean, there are some things here. I'm not sure how many of these we're going to make. But anyway, so now that we have the fission controller, we need to do the multi block. So we need the reactor casing. This stuff here that requires basic plating and tough alloys. Well, you know what? I tell you what, we need to build a whole bunch of these. So I'll get that done. And then we have to like put in the different, I can't remember what they're called. They are called coolers and moderator blocks. And they have to put in, they have to be put in a certain way. Um, for instance, if we want to use a water cooler, we have to make sure it's touching at least one reactor cell or active moderator block. So each one of these different ones we want to use has different rules. So I will just go ahead and play around with this. I don't find that to be particularly interesting to record, but I will find something that'll work for us and then we'll be right back. All right, guys. So we got ourselves a nuclear craft fission reactor. This is, I think, a seven by seven by one design is what it's called. Um, I don't know if this is going to work for us or not. I've just been making some blocks, placing them and trying to get ourselves a valid structure. Uh, so pretty much what we got here is we have four reactor cells and then those reactor cells are all surrounded by graphite blocks. And since the graphite is touching the reactor cells, those turn into active graphite blocks. Uh, surrounding the graphite blocks, we have glowstone on the uh, edges, and I guess that'd be the, the sides, the corners, I'm not sure. The diagonals, and then against the reactor casing, we have quartz cooler. Um, so the way this works, if we look at the glowstone cooler, we hold shift, it says it must touch at least two active moderator blocks so that's the glowstone. So the glowstone is touching two of the active graphite, every one of these, right? Um, and then we have copper touching the glowstone. So we look at the copper one, it says must touch at least one valid glowstone cooler. And all of these are touching at least one. Um, these two are touching the same one, those two are touching the same one, but they're all touching at least one, right? So it's all that same pattern all the way around. And then the quartz cooler here, uh right no which one is the quartz cooler this one it says must touch at least one active moderator block and then i also have that touching the casing as well which doesn't really matter but yeah so the glowstone has to touch two the copper has to touch the glowstone and then we have these quartz coolers which are touching at least one uh, of the active cooler blocks so i don't know if this is all going to work but that's why this is set up in the way that it is and if we put the reactor casing over like so, it says it's a seven by one by seven fission reactor with a minus 2000 heat per tick. I don't know how much heat that we're going to be generating. So this is something that we are going to be testing out. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get ourselves a, what, what is it called? This stuff, the uranium nuclear fuel. We want to get one of these, the enriched nuclear fuel, I suppose. And we are uh, wearing our hazmat suit, so we should be able to touch this stuff, no problem. Now, if we put this in here, I think you also have to give it a redstone signal, now that I remember. Uh, lever, do we have one? We do, perfect. All right. Now, pretty sure that has to have a redstone signal for it to work, so we place this in here. This is IC2LEU. This uh, is gonna generate 9,000, uh, yeah, 9,094 RF per tick. And we have a minus 711 heat per tick. So that means that we should be okay. Now we're generating power, which we don't need. 
we are generating no heat. So I think we're good. Yep. The only thing we're really waiting for is just that fuel to get spent. Now we can make this thing bigger. Oh, that's nice. It says it's going to take two more minutes for this thing to generate. Now, I don't know. Can I use my time in a bottle on this or is that bad? This doesn't say that's going to take any less time. I click it a few more times. We're still generating heat the way we should. Oh, and yeah, that time remaining does kind of update a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, so yes, we definitely can use the time in a bottle to speed this process up. We could generate or I guess capture this RF if we wanted to. Thing is, though, our uh, our big induction casing over here, we're full. So I have set up our reactor instead of being wide open throttle like we've been for a while. I hooked our computer back up to it. And it's adjusting the control rod, the insertion percent, to be the same as the percent of the internal energy buffer. So that's pretty much regulating our fuel usage. Instead of just going full blast all the time, yeah, we're using only 83%, or I guess, uh, what would that be? Like 17% of our normal fuel usage. Yep. Anyway, so we don't really need any of this power that we're generating. So anyway, we have the depleted uranium nuclear fuel now, okay? So that we have to put into a fuel reprocessor that'll give us some uranium-238. I guess that's going to give us four uranium-238 and then a tiny pile of plutonium. And again, to make this block, we need three of those. So let's make ourselves the fuel reprocessor. We don't have that on us, or we don't have a recipe to do that. So let's come upstairs real quick. Um, is it worth making a recipe for a fuel reprocessor? I don't think it is. I think this is just going to be one of those machines we make once and we call it good. Uh, so we just need a machine chassis, tough alloy. Machine chassis. Go ahead and do that. Tough alloy. We will craft up. Oh, I don't know. How about 10 of those? Oh, how about less than 10 of those? Let's craft up like, uh, three or so. Cause I think we only needed two. And then we're going to need some basic plating. We'll just say craft one. Hopefully we have everything ready to go now. There we go. Fuel reprocessor. Ooh, I made the advancement picking up the pieces. Cool. So I think what we're going to do, let's set this guy over here. We'll hook it up with our applied energistics. Let me interface. And I guess while that's crafting, we can make the recipe here. So if we come over here and we do the uses on this, we can do this. And that kind of doesn't really tell us what we want, does it? That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's showing up in so many different spots like this. Shouldn't this all, like, are these a percentage chance? I'm not sure. But we want the tiny pile of plutonium. That's the thing that we are really interested in. Fortunately, it's not going to show us. So I think what we're going to end up doing, let's just manually do one of these. How's the power done? All right. So we want a conduit. I guess we can just use one of these under energy conduits. We don't need anything too crazy here. So we got power. We'll put this in here. We'll do this manually. So yeah, it looks like we end up with this stuff every time. So we'll say four and one. So we will change this recipe over here. So the depleted, the uses of that does this, and we will erase those, change that to a four, add one of those. And I think that should make this recipe better. So ME interface, we'll grab this guy and we'll hook that up over here. And then we should be able to automate that process going forward. Okay. So that says, uh, one depleted uranium nuclear fuel will generate one tiny pile of plutonium plus four uranium two three eights. All right. I think that's exactly what we want. So that's a way for us to get the plutonium out of the nuclear fuel. Oh, you know what I did not do was uh, extract out of that machine and put it back into the interface. Yeah, that's the thing that I need to do. Uh, I guess we can just do an import bus. Let me import. We have one of those we'll make for the speed upgrades. Okay, so the import bus goes here. And then we are also going to need to get ourselves one light blue cable. 
like so. And then the acceleration cards go here. Awesome. All right, now we're done. I'll put that torch back so we don't spawn any monsters back there. Awesome. So that is all set to go. The other thing that we could do is hook up a applied energistic setting over here that I'll say uh, one of the enrich will equal the depleted fuel. Yeah, put an interface on this guy and then this will do its thing automatically. We could make this reactor bigger so it speeds up this process, but since this thing seems perfectly safe to do what we want to do automatically, I don't think I'm going to worry about that. But anyway, I'll go ahead and hook up a interface over here. We'll put this lever on the bottom so it always has the power. Uh, yeah, and then we will automate this thing. All right, so we have our interface here, and we are extracting out of the fission controller just with a conduit right into this interface. The interface says one enriched uranium nuclear fuel equals one depleted one. Okay, so that should do that automation. And then we have the automation over there for the plutonium, and we have the automation to craft the enriched nuclear fuel. So if I tell the system to make me one plutonium, we should craft the enriched uranium nuclear fuel, which will turn into the depleted, which will get processed into these. And this should go into the system once everything completes. So let's see if this is working. Yep, looks like we have fission. Looks like this is doing its thing. It's not fast, so we do need to speed it up to get this to go at any reasonable rate. But yeah, we could just click that a few times and we well, actually I'm clicking one more time. Click it a few more times here. We will get ourselves the one tiny pile of plutonium. And if we look in here, once that goes through the other machine, there we go. Tiny pile of plutonium. So now we can automate making plutonium whenever we want to. That is fantastic. Okay, so now that we have that, we should be able to tell the system how to craft one of these. But I'm not sure if we have the palace crystal recipe. Uh, no, we don't. Okay, so that's another thing that we're going to have to do. Uh, I'll just set up the recipe like I've done these other ones over here for our automations. And then we should be able to make plutonium. All right, guys. So the palace crystal thing, that was pretty simple set up. We've done this a few times before. So, yep, it's just putting all these items into our pedestals over there and then the main item into this guy and then extracting the main item when it's complete. So we can now do that. No problem. So the draconic core, I do believe everything should be ready to go. If we tell it to make a draconic core, uh, we do have to craft one tiny pile of plutonium, which is fine. Uh, we'll go speed that process up, but I think everything else should be ready. It does need to make a few things here. Palace crystal block. I'm not sure what all it's doing. Actually, why does it need to make another palace crystal block? I am not sure. In order to make this, we needed the empowered one, but we already have one of those, so maybe there's something else it needs to do. Maybe it has to do with the draconium. I don't know. Let's go ahead and start this thing up and see what happens, though. Uh, I feel like a lot of auto-crafting is about to take place. <laughs> I don't know why I feel that way. I just do. So we're making some calcium sulfide. We're doing the depleted uranium nuclear fuel. All of that's happening, so I guess we need to come down here and speed this up. Uh, yeah, this is currently doing its thing, so we'll go ahead and click that with our time in a bottle a few times. This is probably going to be one of those things where I should just queue up a bunch of plutonium and just have it already made in the background. Yeah, I, I feel like that's probably something that we should do. So, whoops. So I think we should be about done here. It's... Yep, everything's crafted. Awesome. So we have ourselves one draconic core. Mm-hmm. Yes. So if I want to make another one, just out of curiosity, uh, there is a lot of stuff that needs to go into this, but we were able to make our very first one, and that's pretty awesome. Okay. Oh, I got a quest complete. Gate draconic evolution. Ooh. That's awesome. Let's take the top loot chest. We'll claim it. And that gives us a couple more of the Draconic Cores. Uh, quest complete Dracon... Uh, yeah, the Dragon Heart. We did that a while ago. So we'll re... We'll right-click this and we get ourselves a door. Well, four doors. Hmm. Okay. So back to the Draconic Evolution tab. Yeah, the Draconic... Or the Dragon Heart. Let's do this one. Claim that and pop it. And we get ourselves a Resonant Exchanger. That's pretty cool. I... 
been using what an emerald one is this is the resonant one better uh this one does rf and i think this one does durability so i do have unbreaking on this one and i've been putting it into our item repair so i guess this one is technically better that's pretty cool so we get ourselves an upgrade um i guess i'll just stick it in here for now when i need to exchange blocks we'll look at doing that so all of this stuff is now done so dimension inscriber we have everything except for the empty dimension tab so this is another thing that we need to worry about here so we need paper bark wood now if you click on this it shows that it only gener generates on stella which i don't think that is actually accurate i guess like i think we can make our own so if we do well we might even have those paper well we have paper so we do paper wood paper sapling i think paper bark yeah i think that is the same thing right if we grow this tree i think that's the same thing let's do another one and another one all right so we'll do those uh so we need some bone meal and then we're gonna need silk touch i believe it said that we needed do we have silk touch up in here we have i guess this is our silk touch pickaxe let's grab that okay so let's place this guy and we will bone meal in hopefully yeah okay so silk touch hold down the vein mine button so we have paper bark wood awesome okay so the only thing that we're gonna need to do at this point is to make sure that we get ourselves uh more paper so we can make more of these things uh i don't know how we're gonna automate this i don't know if there is a good way to automate that I guess we go to Stella and then we just mine a whole bunch of this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so that is a thing that we're going to have to do here. We have three of those and we needed how many? We needed four. So I have to do that at least one more time. Yeah, probably going to like spam bone meal on one of these things just to get a whole bunch of paper. Actually, do we have sugarcane? I don't remember how we've been getting paper in this. Yeah, we might just bone meal for a whole bunch. So we could probably do something like a user... One of these guys full of bone meal. In fact, this might be fun to do. Let's make like 500 bone meal. That's fine. Place this guy pointed there. We want to set that to use, I believe is what we want. We have to give it power so we can use this guy. All right. So then I just need that bone meal. Like so. We'll fill that into here. And yeah, we get it decently fast, but I think we can get it faster. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you know what? We are getting it that fast. It's just all clumping up together. So we got ourselves a bunch of stacks of paper <laughs> real fast. I like it. Anyway, let me go ahead and make some more of these. We'll go ahead and uh, silk touch all the wood down, get enough of this paper bark wood, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Well, the final thing that we are missing for making the dimension inscriber, or I guess the empty dimension tab, is this crystal tine ingots. And to make that, we need a whole bunch of stuff here. Ten lapis, eight diamonds, four iron, two gold, and then four nether star nuggets. All of that together in an elite crafting makes a crystal tine ingot. Well, I just spawned in 30 withers so we can do a full stack of these things all at once. Actually, I think I only need 29 withers, but I did 30 anyway. But here we go. Here is 64 crystal tine ingots. I don't think we get any reward or anything for doing that. But now that we put that in here, we can make ourselves the empty dimension tab. I made the recipes to make the block of black iron, the banded block. Um, yep. Yep. And we have a recipe that turns the crystal tiny ingots into the nuggets. And then I did go ahead and spam a whole bunch of paper bark saplings. I used the watering can. I did like, I don't know, a full stack of them, put them all together and then vein mined all of them. So that was kind of a faster way of doing it. But yeah, now we have an empty dimension tab. I don't know if we get a quest complete for that, but I want to put that in my inventory anyway. Doesn't appear that we do. Okay. So we want to make a dimension inscriber and we will do that. So does that give us a quest complete? It really should, and it does. Okay, so that's probably under the RF tools section here, dimension inscriber, and then we, yeah, I guess the empty dimension tab completed this portion of it. 
So let's claim the bottom loot chest and we get ourselves a razor wire. Not something we're going to be using. Okay. So now that that is done, oh my goodness, guys, the dimension inscriber. How is the dimension builder? Because that's our next one. Is this thing as crazy? Oh, it is crazier. <laughs> okay. So now that we can inscribe a dimension, we need to do this. Ooh, boy. So awakened, that means we have to do uh, fusion crafting cores. We have to be on the wyvern tier. So if we want to do wyvern injectors, that is, yeah, that's the second tier of that. So we already have to do like the basic ones. And then the wyvern ones themselves require having eight of those. Um, the fusion crafting core, this is going to be a lot of fun, but that seems like that's one of our next steps that we're going to have to do. Okay, so this is all done. And again, this is to get us to the dimension builder. Yeah, that also requires a digital miner, a void resource miner controller tier six, void or miner controller tier six, uh, an advanced miner from IC2, endist pearl. So we have to make the ultimate crafting table, which we have not done. Okay, we need a shaped card silk quarry. This does not appear to be that bad. Side metal might be something that's going to be a pain. Uh, <laughs> man, what did we get ourselves into here? <laughs> and then an infinity catalyst on top of that. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the big boy right here. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff that we are currently working towards at this point, guys. Where we're going to start? I don't know. We'll have to figure that out next time. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.